All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Fridley Public Schools board meeting. I'm delighted to see everybody here. I would like to call the meeting to order for today, June 21st, and I invite you all to stand, if you wish, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the first item is to approve the agenda for today, uh, June 21st. And I'm going to suggest a small change to the agenda. Item H, the report of other school meetings by board members. Uh, per earlier discussion, there's not a lot there. So I would suggest we strike item H from the agenda. Any other changes to the agenda? Motion to approve. There's a motion. Second. second. And a second by Anna. You won. So uh, very good. Uh, uh, all in favor of the agenda as modified, say aye. 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 All opposed? And we have an agenda. So we have uh, a couple big things on the agenda for today. Uh, obviously, I'm most excited about the budget. <laughs> That's what we're all here for, right? But there are a couple other things I guess we should do first, or we get to do first. So, uh, Dr. Heil, would you like to talk about the Employee of the Month? Yes, thank you. Good evening, Chair Meisner and school board members. It's with pleasure that I introduce the Friendly Public School Employee of the Month for June is Rachel Pabuda. She's a classroom assistant at the FCC, which is here. In her two years with us, Rachel has brought an insight into child development, laughter, humor, a dedication to her position, and an immense flexibility within her role. Rachel has worked primarily in our three-year-old classroom, yet is also willing to sub on a moment's notice. She has also taken on the mantle of a long distance, excuse me, a long-term sub this year in a four-year-old classroom. So as part of her de dedication, she has pursued her short call teaching license. Rachel is a vital part of FCC world, and the children adore her, and she is truly a team player and a valued staff member. So congratulations to Rachel Pabuda. And Dr. Heil, would you like to carry on or would it be Cindy that's going to come up and talk about something that seems to be of interest to the this community? This is totally Miss McKay's show. This so we're is, just going to uh, let her take over. Miss McKay, it's all you. First of all, I thank you for having us tonight. Um, my name is Cindy McKay. I'm a transportation coordinator. I'd like to introduce our new assistant transportation coordinator. I've already introduced them to her. She comes from us for driving school bus, actually has driven one of the little preschoolers that's out right here. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Cindy, would you stand next to the microphone? Do I have to stand on the stool. Sorry. Or, or get near the microphone somehow. Okay, some, see, stand on the there stool. You, you just go. should have said it, stand on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you again for um, having us, and this is so exciting. I'm so happy for the families that came to us tonight. It's just a really great um, event that they were able to come and, and such short notice. I mean, it was a short notice for them. It's just because it's been crazy. I have to say, though, we do our uh, school bus contest um, for our second part of our training that we have to do from MDE. It's just a fun day or fun way for kids to learn bus safety, and then. So this year we had a competition between Hayes and Stevenson, and we had we had Stevenson won 11 and five for Hayes that won posters in the contest. Okay, then we go after they leave our district competition, they go on to state competition, and this is where it gets really exciting. I don't think we've had this many winners in Fridley for a long time. We had seven winners that or seven people that went to the state level that won first, second, or third, and them winners get to go to the St. Paul Saints game plus some other benefits they're going to get so seven of them with families get to go to the st paul saints on august 14th wow that's amazing nice congratulations so, yeah. so I congratulate all, of them. all the artwork was wonderful and this is just first through fourth grade i mean a lot of the other districts had the you know upper grades you know they get a little better but this is first through fourth that we won so uh we had one winner in second grade he was um first in state so he was the first in state 
Um, and then we have two winners that were first in their group and then they go into divisions. And so we have two winners, one from each school. Uh, I don't think either one of them are here, Omar Ashia and um, Ariel Hall. And they are going, their posters are gonna go, no, she's here. She's here, because I like her poster. I like it. This one. So it's they're going to national. So she don't get to take her poster home tonight. Oh. I have to, I have to take it to me. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. I wish Ariel. I was flying to New York with it, but I'm not. So anyway, it goes to New York, and they, it'll be on in October. So congratulations, to all of you. Yeah. Well, we'll bring her yeah. up first. Do you oh, have her? we're gonna go one by one. We'll bring yes. her up first since she's on. Aria, Aria Hansen. Aria Hansen, why don't you come up here? And I want you yeah. to stand up here because I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? <laughs> First of all, do you have your poster? Can you bring your poster up? And your bus. Nice. They all got buses, of course. Mm -hmm. You have to have a bus. Okay. Got to have a bus. Bus. <laughs> That's a bus. Okay. You can stand up on that little chair in case I happen to ask you a question, you know? Okay. So in the district competition, she took, she's a second grader, and she took um, second place. So the poster that went to nationals went second place in here, but somebody else thought it was even better. So there's your certificate for that. Okay. Congratulations. So when you, when you're a, uh, what, you must have been a first place winner because you got 20. So, um, so you get $20 from the district competition, okay? Mm. I, no, you do get 15. Yeah, you're a second place winner. So, second, I just got that messed up. You're, you were, oh, your poster number was 20. You're messing me up, girl. <laughs> so anyway, so you are second place. For second place winner, you get $15. Normally, I like to get $15 a quarter. Go to the bank, shortage of change. Can't mm, no kidding. So no quarters. But I can give you $15. That's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay? Then, since your, your poster went on to national, or is going to nationals, and you'll get another certificate for this, but what I have for you tonight is a, um, a gift card from Barnes & Noble for $50. And, and then that little thing there says you can get those St. Paul Saints. How about wow. that? Wow. All right. Congratulations. Well done, Eric. Congratulations. <laughs> And she is from Stevenson. Can you stand up there? She's tall. She's tall. She's tall. Oh, she's tall. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I guess you don't need to stand up because you're taller than me, probably, right? <laughs> All right, so you're a fourth grader from Stevenson. And so you won for, um, now imagine this. Hers is third place in this district, but it went on to, it did go on to state. And so she gets to go, it didn't win at state, but she still gets to go to the St. Paul Saints. All right, congratulations. All right. Can you tell me? Okay, we're going to show everybody your picture. Nice. Wow. Should we do that for everybody? But anything you want to talk about it? No? <laughs> <laughs> you have to say? Okay. okay. It won. That's all you got to yeah. say. All right. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's pretty great. Congratulations. There you go. All right, next we have Alistair Chong. Alistair? Okay, he's shorter. He can do mm -hmm. There you go. And I'll take your poster there. This is his poster. Wow, very nice. Yeah, as you can see, the theme was one bus, one driver, equal a big impact on education. Okay, he, he's a first grader. And he won first place in the district. Congratulations. So he won first place in the district, so he gets twenty dollars. Oh, that would have been a lot of quarters. That would have been a lot of quarters. Okay. I know, right? Look at that smile. <laughs> and the, your your poster got to go on to state also, and it didn't win at state. It, oh, it took second place at state. Ooh. So you get to go to St. Paul Saints. Yay. Congratulations. We're gonna have fun. You, you it's gonna be so much fun. August fourteenth. We're going to St. Paul Saints. Okay? Congratulations. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. All right, next we 
got Larissa Castillo. Larissa? Do you want to do them at the same time? We can do them at, do you want to do them at the same time, girls, or not? It's up to you. They're probably right. sick of that. No, we say one at a time. Twins. Oh, <laughs> one at a time. Come on up, Larissa. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Okay, put your bus up there. Those are different style bus. They're all different kinds. Larissa Castillo is a third grader at Stevenson, and she placed second place in the district. Do you want to stand up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Go, we can't see you. See we can't see you. Say your po hold. Stand up and hold your poster. They want to see your picture. Oh, okay. There I'm you go. Oh, nice. I love the spot. The sunset sky, yes. yeah. Okay, you won second place, and you won $15. Congratulations. There you go. Good job. Thank you. Now we're going to have your sister come up. We got Liliana. Liliana Castillo. Is it Castillo or Castillo? Castillo? Okay. Perfect. You can stand up there and hold your poster up. You put the bus up there. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Okay, she is in third grade with her twin, of course. So then um, she took third place. So she, you didn't beat out your sister, but you got five bucks. All right. <laughs> Woohoo! Congratulations. There you go. And then I have a little story I heard. Her mom went to Fridley, and he, she's, you want to stand up? <laughs> yes! <laughs> huh? Her sister. Her oh. sister. Oh, sorry. So, oh, uh, her sister. Oh, you know. Sorry. Her sister actually won. Am I over? Her sister yeah. actually won in fourth grade. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Runs in the family. Yeah, that's the mom, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. Rosie Johansson. Ro Rosie. It's Rosalie, but Rosie, right? Rosie or Rosa, did you say? Um, I said Rosie. Rosie. Good. She's a good remember her. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can stand up. You can put your bus up there. And then you can, can you hold it up? Or should we put it out a little bit? Here, let's put the stool out a little bit. I don't want you to fall. Can you get down a minute? Put it out a little bit there. Okay, there we go. All right, you can hold your poster up. Nice. nice. Yeah, watercolors. Yeah. Idea, huh? mm -hmm. Good thing. Yeah. Okay. She's a first grader at Hayes, and she took third place. And so you have five dollars. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you. Here's your bus. Oh, you got it. Here's your bus. Turn around and smile. You want to turn around? Dad wants a picture. Turn around. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wait. You want to stand up here? You can stand up here. Dad wants a picture. There it is. Good job. Okay. <laughs> All right, now we have Shawana Sacho, is that right? Shawana? Shawana? Oh, here hey. she is. Oh, yeah. She'll need this. Here you go. Put the bus up there. Hey. And wait, we need another stool. <laughs> <laughs> but she's only, a, she's only a kindergartner, right? Yeah. She's in first grade now. She's in first grade now. Do you want to hold that up? Is that... Yeah. Hold Eliza it up there. She nice. took, she's a kindergartner at Stevenson, and she took third place, so she has five dollars. Congratulations. Good job. There you go. Thank you, first grader. <laughs> well go. done. Uh, next we have Caleb Jones. Here's Mr. Caleb. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm going to hold it up. Oh, nice. Hey, Caleb Jones is a kindergartner. Took second place at Stevenson, from Stevenson. So second place gets you $15. Ooh, okay. congratulations. All right, and then, well, what's in here? You took first place at State, so you $35 gift card from Barnes & Noble. Ooh. And you get to go to the Saints game. Wow. Congratulations. Cool. Good job. Try, try again next year, maybe you go to Nationals, huh? Mm -hmm. Good job. All right, next we have Ruth. Is it Bikili? Yeah, Ruth? Bikili. Thank you for. Thank you. Okay, Ruth. Oh, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth is a second grader at Stevenson. You want to hold your poster up for me and put your bus up there, maybe? Oh. 
Good job. And hold your poster up high so they can see it. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. nice. All right. She took second place, so she gets fifteen dollars. Congratulations. Second grade. Oh, she's a third place. I'm sorry. You, you're a second grader. I messed it up. She did five dollars. But anyway, it's money, right? Cool. Don't spend it on one spot. <laughs> Congratulations. Good job. Okay. Can you put that bus up there and then hold your poster up? Should be very proud of this. This is a fourth grader from Stevenson. Oh, look at that! First mm -hmm. place in the district competition. Congratulations! So she has a crisp twenty-dollar bill. There you go, huh? Well nice. done. There you go. Congratulations. Nice job. Thank you, boss. Thank you. Uh, next we have JL Antoinette Graham. JL, you should come. Can you stand up there and hold your poster up and put your bus on there? Hold it up high. Oh, oh you know nice. your bus matches cool. that bus. Look at that. They the, yeah, all got their safety belts on. Yeah. 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 Seatbelts in that bus. Yeah. She's a first grader at Hayes, and she took second place. I'm a second grader. Congratulations. Oh. You're a second grader? Okay. I'll change that. Okay. Anyway, you won $15. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I must have cranked it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you so much. Last but not least, Ocean Hernandez. Yay. Mm. He should not be able to touch that bus. <laughs> <laughs> you can come up. You can come up. He's gonna help. We need a helper. Can you hold that? You hold that poster up. Hi. Nice. <laughs> come around over here. Come here and stand. Good job. There you go. Hello. Okay, Hi there. <laughs> okay, Ocean Hernandez. She's a third grader. She took first place at uh, Stevenson. Congratulations. And so she got, what do you think you got? First place? $20, okay? Mm -hmm. But went to state and took third place, so her family gets to go to the Saints game. Yay! And then uh, we have a little story about the bus. She got home with the bus because they got the bus from schools, and we can't find the other bus. So we had to get a different one. Somebody. <laughs> Somebody took it, we don't know who. Uh oh. <laughs> He's got his hands on it. All right. <laughs> Thank you all. Congratulations, all everybody. Congratulations. Nice all work. Thank you. Oh, you want to stand up there, huh? <laughs> oh, he's got something to say. You got something to say? <laughs> <laughs> you want to stand up there? No? Okay. Bye. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank it. You, Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Ms. McKay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was just delightful. And Yes, and so thank you, uh, and that's wonderful that everybody could come and, and participate, and congratulations to the winners. That is some fantastic artwork, some really nice jobs being done there, and it's very important stuff. So uh, thank you, and you're welcome to stick around. There's a public meeting, but you don't have to, so you may sneak out if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to listen to the budget. The budget is really interesting. <laughs> So, we can move right. on to other fun things. <laughs> we'll go on to the graduation All stats, right. Dr. Heil. Thank you, Chair Meisner and School Board. We are, I am excited to share about our graduation of 2022, and we had several of our board members were graduates this year, so congratulations. We had a total of 210 graduates, and these students participated uh, at the Friendly High School football field, which was wonderful on June 2nd. So, among our graduates, we had 13 full IB diploma candidates that completed six DP courses and examinations, theory of knowledge course and essay, 4,000 word independent extended essay, and participated in creativity, action, and service activities. We had 12 students in the IB Scholars Program that took at least four IB DP courses and examinations. 
We had 12 presidential education awards, and that means they were received 3.5 GPA and scored at or above the 80th percentile on their ACT or SAT scores. 14 students graduating with their associate degree. We had 29 students graduating with honors with a GPA of 3.25 to 3.49. 41 of our students graduated with high honors of a GPA of 3.5 to 3.74. And we had 28 students who graduated with the highest honors with a GPA of 3.75 and a minimum of three IBDP courses and an examinations. And we had 39 students that graduated with an academic letter award. So congratulations to the class of 2022 and the best wishes for our busy graduates in the future. I'm sure they're sleeping in now. Next, we're gonna take the other end of it. So we wanna celebrate, uh, share celebrations for the AOC preschool, fourth grade and eighth grade. So our AOC celebrated graduates in a small uh, ceremony here at Fridley Community Center on May 26th. And so we wanna congratulate them on all their hard work and perseverance towards graduation. And we had a really nice sized class. So that was really nice to see that graduation at AOC. Uh, this year, here's our littles, this year preschool graduates celebrated with their parents and teachers as they graduated for the future class of 2035 is what you're looking at there. So we also had fourth graders at Hayes were celebrated with all of their families on the afternoon of June 8th. Students received individualized certificates, participated in a final walk around the school loop with lots of cheering. They had a barbecue lunch, which was served to them in a minute to win it games and a tug of war game was also played. Later in the afternoon, each fourth grader received a gift of a t-shirt featuring their graduation year, Jack the Giraffe and Fredly the Tiger. And lastly, they participated in autograph signing with their peers. There was so much laughter and excitement filled the halls for the amazing fourth grade scholars going off to middle school. Next, we have Stevenson celebrated their fourth grade scholars with their families on June 7th. Their students displayed and shared their culminating uh, K through four IB project exhibition. Students shared why they chose their inquiries, why they learned, what they learned, and what action they took to make the world a better place. At the conclusion, they celebrated with the picnic families, joined them outdoors, students signed yearbooks, were given certificates, and all guests enjoyed cupcakes. Uh, we will miss our fourth graders and wish them the very best. Last but not least, middle school. Middle school end of year was so much fun. The middle school students each received a Tiger Nation t-shirt and uh, the uh, class pictures were taken. This was a fun way to celebrate the end of the year and to build community. Also, eighth grade students took a celebratory field trip to the battle paddle for a cruise boat down the Mississippi River. Students had the opportunity to take pictures at Harriet Island and then had lunch on the boat. When they returned to school, they received a certificate of completion of eighth grade and ice cream. The field trip was a huge success. Students and teachers had a blast and have requested this become an annual tradition to celebrate eighth grade. I think Dr. Cochran was mentioning budget there, but okay, all right. <laughs> Is is live on TV, right, Dr. Cochran? Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Heil. Our next item on the agenda, then, um, and you know, we're we're building up to the the most interesting thing here is our budget presentation. It's gonna be a little tough to follow, and I believe uh, John Trope, and you pronounced it Trope. Is that correct? Did I miss Brian's? It's uh, John Tope. Oh, no, Mono. R. Tope. I had the right vowel. And thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Chair Meisner, uh, Dr. Hiles, and members of the board. Tonight we'll present the fiscal 22-23 budget, uh, expecting uh, some questions if you have them, and then asking for approval. Uh, the fiscal 22-23 budget is based on 2760 uh, average daily membership of students for the 22-23 year. That's a slight decline, as you see in the graph that's in front of you, uh, from the fiscal 21-22 revised budget. So it's about 31 and a half students lower uh, on a, the projection for revenue. Uh, as far as budget assumptions, uh, enrollment drives a lot of our revenue. So that's based on our average daily membership. Any student that's in grades seven through 12 is weighted slightly higher at 20% more than uh, sixth graders and below. And our revenue uh, comes from a number of different places besides the students. Uh, we do get federal revenue. 
uh, Title I, II, III, Carl Perkins money, special education, federal money, which is based on child count. Uh, but the majority of our money comes from state aid and the ancillary uh, revenues that are generated off of state aids. Uh, the last one, local miscellaneous, that's our local school district property tax levy that you certified in December. That's effective for fiscal year 22-23, effective 7-1. Uh, so as I was reviewing the uh, general fund budget, uh, there's a number of things that uh, you need to uh, take into account. General education revenue was $6,728 per student last year. We received a 2% increase from the state for fiscal 22-23, so that is $6,863 per student. Again, that's buffeted by a slight decline in our student count. A uh, number of things are generated off of that uh, number. Gifted and talented revenue is $13 per pupil unit. Staff development is 2% of general education aid. Learning and development uh, revenue is a, a product of the number of students that we have in grades K through six. And also the operating capital and long-term facilities maintenance formulas are driven by enrollment. Uh, so we have some known revenue projections. One of them is the tax levy revenue, that, again, that we certified in December. That would be for taxpayers to pay in calendar year 22, but our fiscal year starts July 1, so that is revenue for us starting this July 1 for our 22-23 fiscal year. Uh, we also have some state aids that are based on prior year enrollment, the, the big ones being compensatory and QCOM. Uh, there's some unknown uh, revenues which are estimated at, the, at this time in the budget, the biggest one being special education, state special education, I should say. Uh, the federal revenues uh, that we normally annually receive have been rolled forward at their previous uh, revised 21-22 budget amounts, and the same with the local revenues except for obviously the tax levy revenue which is a known. So our, our expenses in the general fund are uh, in uh, about six major categories, salary and benefits being the biggest one. Uh, the next biggest one is purchase services, and then instructional supplies and non-instructional supplies. And then we also have uh, usually group those together, equipment and other categories. And we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, so as I looked at preparing the budget for 22-23, I looked at all the salary settlements for uh, the teachers, clerical, custodian, paraprofessionals, and other uh, non-affiliated group uh, people and took that into consideration. Uh, the percentages were, were varied, of course, as they usually are. And then I looked at the non-people costs as well. We have some lease agreements. Uh, examples would be copiers, ALC uh, payments that we have for uh, renting the ALC. Utilities, which are looking to be a little bit higher at the end of 21-22 than what we projected. So I had to go off of that projection and I'm, I am projecting a 6% increase in utilities uh, for the 22-23 year. Uh, insurance, we have uh, a pretty flat workman's comp renewal, which is good news. Um, but the property casualty liability insurance, we are projecting about a 10% increase. I do have pretty good information that that is going to be right where it lands. Uh, the other, last thing I looked at was the transportation uh, contracts that we have with our contractors and factored those into consideration. Uh, this pie chart just shows our general fund revenues by type. Uh, you can see most of our uh, Revenue is generated by state aid at 73%. Uh, a bigger factor in, than in past years has been the federal aids because of the federal stimulus dollars that we have received over the last two to three years. Uh, there's our property tax levy amount, which is about 17% of our total general fund levy. And then other local levy like participation fees, activities fees, uh, rental of school facilities, those kinds of things are in that uh, other local uh, revenue at 2% 2 per, 2 or about a million dollars. Uh, next one is a pie chart that shows our fiscal 22-23 general fund expenditures by type. Uh, direct your attention to the bottom where we have our salaries on the right side. That comprise about 53% of our budget and benefits which comprise about 20%. So 73% of every dollar that the district spends or is projecting to spend for 22-23 is on human resources. 
Uh, one thing I did point out uh, previously is that that other category has about $3.25 million uh, of equipment and building improvements in that. That's typically not as high as uh, in other years as it is in this year uh, because we do have a lot of construction projects going on. Uh, this uh, slide is a uh, general fund synopsis. Uh, would direct your attention to towards the bottom where it says subtotal unassigned. Our projected balance at the end of this year, which is ending June 30th, is a little over $3 million. And our revenues and expenditures on that same line and our transfers uh, project out to about a balanced budget. So we look like we would be adding about $21,000 to our unassigned fund balance. And I think the camera is kind of in the way maybe, but maybe not for the public. Um, at the bottom right is a computation of what our assigned, unassigned fund balance is. Uh, the board has wanted an unassigned fund balance of between 7 and 10 percent. And this number computed uh, for the 22-23 budget is 8.9%. This is a, uh, a slide of all of our other funds. Uh, direct your attention up to the top under restricted for food service, $576,000 estimated fund balance. We are spending a fair amount of our fund balance in 22-23. Um, um, on freezer replacements, we are being very conservative on our revenues. Um, so this would very much be the worst case scenario for food service and likely will come out better than the $71,000 at the end of 22-23. That's still a 3% fund balance. Um, if we have too much fund balance in our food service, we need to reduce it anyway per MDE requirements. So this is a good spend down uh, doing the freezer replacements. Uh, you have our, our other funds, our building fund, general and other post-employment benefits, debt funds, our trust and agency fund where we have our o OPEB revoc revocable trust fund, and then we also have internal service funds for health and dental insurance. And those are all basically rolled forward uh, revenue and expense, except for the debt service. We put the schedules in there as to how much principal and interest we're going to be paying off and how much property tax levy revenue we get for uh, the debt service. And with that, if there's questions or comments from board members, uh, I would say in closing that it's nice to have a balanced budget in our general fund, at least uh, preliminarily uh, for 22-23. Uh, we typically would revise this budget mid-year uh, when more known variables are uh, available to us, uh, specifically enrollment as of 10-1 as well. Um, so probably sometime in January, February, you'll see a revised budget for 22-23. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any questions for John? Any comments? Um, it, like on the food on the food fund, uh, if there's a balance and we don't have a pressing need, can we do an annual transfer uh, to the general on that? I don't remember. Can't out of food service. Yeah. Um, you can transfer in from the general fund if you have a food service deficit balance, right. but you cannot transfer out okay. of food service. Anything else? Thank you, John. Thank you. So if there's no discussion on that, I'll move that we um, accept the budget as described. Second. So there's a motion by Meisner and a second by Pruito. Any further discussions on the budget? Then all in favor of the budget say aye. 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 All opposed? And that is unanimous. We have a second item under our business action items. That is a resolution for the uh, approval of Northeast Metro 916 Intermediate School District Long-Term Facility Maintenance Program Budget and Authorizing. And I believe John might be coming up to comment on that as well. Uh, Chair Meisner, uh, Dr. Heil, members of the board, this is an annual uh, resolution that allows the Intermediate School District 916 some levy authority, I believe the number is $7,497, um, for their long-term facility maintenance uh, projects that they have going on in the Intermediate School District. So our allocation is about 2.7%, very low number, and that would be placed on our property tax levy for pay 23 if the board approves that. Any questions or comments? Thank you, John. 
Um, if there's no discussion on that, then I will move that we accept the resolution for the Northeast Metro 916 Intermediate School District uh, budget authorizing. Second. And a second by Abdi Islam. And no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That is unanimous. We have a third item under our business action items. That is a resolution for uh, renewing the membership in the Minnesota State High School League. Dr. Heil. Thank you, Chair Meisner, School Board. This evening we're asking for permission um, for our annual Minnesota State High School League uh, annual membership. This allows us to have, uh, for freely to participate in all of MSHSL and their arts and athletic um, events. Any questions or comments? Then? Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve the renewal in the Minnesota State High School League by Pruito. Second. Second by Anna. All right. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor of renewing the membership in the Minnesota State High School League, say aye. 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 All opposed? That is unanimous. Our next item of business is the consent agenda. The consent agenda this week has a number of routine items, including the minutes from our regular school board meetings, the work session and closed session held on May 17th, 2022. There's some monthly financial reports. There are new contracts, amendments, leaves of absence, resignations, retirements, and terminations. The 21-22 QCOMP report, the final student parent handbook for 22-23, the rate for 22-23 private transportation contracts and some limited contracts for type 3 transportation. Assuming there are no discussion on the consent items, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. There's one abstain. The next item uh, is a written information on the first reading of our policies. And I'd like to invite Dr. Bodie up to share policy 102 on equal education. Good evening, Board Chair Meisner, Board Members, and Dr. Heil. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, present to you a first reading of policy 102, Equal Educational Opportunities for Students. Um, this is a shorter policy, uh, but within it are updates based on the MS, MSBA um, recommendations. Um, in section A and B, it's just some updated and more relevant language. Um, and then in sections C and D, it's added um, around section 504 and sexual harassment discrimination. And then also um, this policy has updates on referencing additional policies that have more details. So. Thank you, Dr. Bodie. Um, and then any questions about the equal uh, educational opportunity? The next item then, thank you, is the uh, policy 406. And I'd like to invite Ike Isaacson up. Thank you, Board Chair Meisner, Superintendent Dr. Heil and board members. Um, it's my privilege to provide a first reading of policy 406 relevant to public and private personnel data. Um, those changes are made to mirror updates to MSB policy. The changes provide a more specific assessment to the individuals under the domain of the policy and two, they more specifically define what's private versus public. And they note as well that the policy pertains to both current and former employees. Policy also makes clear the specific district obligations that must be met when there's an investigation and finally, the policy also reflects updates and clarification regarding the responsible authority for personnel data privacy within the school district. Thank you, Mr. Isaacson. Any questions or comments on policy 406? Then we can move to the next one. And coincidentally, Mr. Isaacson is sitting there ready to talk about policy, policy 413. Indeed, it's my privilege. Uh, policy 413 relates to harassment and violence, and this likewise contains a number of edits and updates that are aligned with changes to MSBA policy. Um, those edits and updates work to strike out a multitude of definitions for groups and individuals and instead reference protected class. 
Those changes also clarify protected classifications and define a disability as a person that has a physical, sensory, or mental impairment that materially limits one or more major life activities. The policy changes also emphasize protections against harassment and discrimination. And finally, the edits also reflect a change to the policy whereby we acknowledge it's electronically posted versus being conspicuously displayed throughout each building. Very good. Thank you, Ike. Any comments or questions on policy 413? Then that's the first readings of our policies for today. Thank you, sir. And our next item on the agenda is the important future school board dates. So we have a district holiday on July 4th, Independence Day. All buildings will be closed. The Fridley Community Theater youth production of Mary Poppins Jr will be on July 8th at 7 p.m. and July 9th at 2 p.m. in the District Auditorium in the Fridley High School. The Fridley Public School Board Meeting, next one is July 12th. That is a date change. Um, and so that is July 12th, 5.30 p.m. work session, 7 p.m. open forum, and 7.30 p.m. for business meeting here at the Fridley Community Center. And the Fridley Community Theater production of Once Upon a Mattress will run from July 22nd through the 30th on various two weekends, I believe, uh, at 7 p.m. on the 22nd, 23rd, 28th, and 29th, and at 2 p.m. on July 30th. That's here at the District Auditorium as well. That is the agenda for today. So unless there's any other discussion on agenda items, then we may... Motion to agenda meeting. We may have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.